Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is One Dynamics, One Platform Introduction. My name is Brad, and I'll be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this session through Teams Live events, and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. This session is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. When you join this event, your name, email address, and or phone number may be viewable by other session participants in the attendee list. By joining, you're agreeing to this experience. The recording will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within the coming weeks. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout the event and in the Q&A segment near the end. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Saurabh Kuchal. Saurabh, take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Brad. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. Thank you for joining in. We are starting a new Tech Talk series today. Uh, this is One Dynamics, One Platform. It's one of the biggest investment area from us as we look forward to converge all Dynamics 365 apps to a single Dynamics platform. We call it in short ODOP, and it's not a new SKU, it's, it's a vision where all personas such as administrator, end user, developer, or analyst have one experience with any of the Dynamics 365 apps. Let's dive in. We have one of the best lineup of speakers today as it's an introduction session. So and it's a big investment area. We definitely want to have uh, in success with you. So and we have multiple teams supporting this initiative behind the scene. Implementation guide, please keep it downloaded at your end. It, it has uh, lots of content and covering from initiate all the way to operate phase. And if you are looking for something in the guidance, how do I particular uh, implementation in any area you may find in this one. So please keep an eye on this one. Let's look at the agenda. So we will understand what is ODOP, what is the objective, principles and approach we have uh, taken uh, for this vision. What, what we will also understand what it covers and under one dynamics on a platform. You will hear one admin, one user experience, one user runtime, which is dual right, virtual table, business events, one developer experience, and also not the least one insights. This is what uh, entails under one dynamics one platform to bring one experience across all these personas. And in the end, we will have a Q&A as well. I will hand it off to Sunil here. Sunil, over to you. All right, thank you Saurabh for that introduction. Hello everyone, nice to have you in the session today. Uh, before we jump into the details of um, specific areas of One Dynamics One platform, let's spend a few minutes to try and understand what are the objectives for why we are even talking about One Dynamics One platform. If we look at the history of Dynamics applications, we all understand each application has had its own evolution. For example, finance and operations started as Acceptor, and then it has gone through its own uh, journey, so to speak, um, to where it is today. Similarly, other Dynamics applications like sales, marketing, CE, field service, also have had their own um, journey, so to speak. So it is um, it is a testament to the fact that these applications obviously are not interconnected uh, or have not been interconnected, even though um, these applications are part of Dynamics 365 umbrella. So one Dynamics one platform investment area from Microsoft is an acknowledgement of that gap, which is. Dynamics 365 applications should be talking to each other out of the box. And that is the expectation from all of you. That is the expectation from our customers, partners, ISVs, and anyone who is actually buying these products. So hence, Microsoft started this journey roughly around three years ago with the advent of dual ride and then virtual tables and other capabilities as we will go through the details. But the acknowledgement here is the fact that this has been a gap for several years 
and it has become a priority for Microsoft now to come and enable these integration capabilities out of the box so that these applications can talk to each other. The prime motivation here basically is the learnings and understanding that we have had from all of you, which is the time and money and investments that you have to do after you buy these products to make these products to talk to each other. So that is something Microsoft should be helping there so that all of you can focus on your core skills and core capabilities, whichever that is. It can be to enhance your business process in your organization as a customer, or it can be to focus on your IP development as an ISV, or it can be to also focus on implementation best practices as a partner. We want you to focus on that so that we can help you in terms of enabling these capabilities out of the box. Now, who is going to be the beneficiary of all these investments? How do we see value accruing to, to who are those people that will accrue value to, right? So from that perspective, if we take a step back and look at the personas that are interacting with the system, we find ourselves looking at our admins. Our administrators spend time in LCS to manage finance and operations, and our administrators also spend time on Power Platform Admin Center to manage other Dynamics applications. So there is clearly an opportunity for us to help our administrators to make our administrators more productive and efficient. So that is where One Dynamics One Platform is attempting to help to bring those experiences and capabilities into one place so that administrators can be more efficient. Similarly, if we talk about our developers, our developers are using a myriad of developer tool sets today, depending on what application they are building a solution for. We have a rich ecosystem of X++ developers working for um, building applications for FNO in the Visual Studio IDE. And then we also have a rich ecosystem of developers who are building applications for rest of Dynamics applications, CE, Sales, Field Service, which is a different tool set. So if we expect our developers to build a cross application scenario, to build customizations and implementations for cross application scenarios, then we definitely see seams in the developer experiences, which is making our developers less productive. Switching between different tools, learning different technologies, learning different experiences takes time. And that is where our one developer focus comes into play where One Dynamics One Platform is attempting to fill those gaps and make our developers more efficient and productive. Then we talk about our One users. Now, from a from a process perspective, we can think about you know developers have become efficient and they have developed a solution which is cross application. Our administrators have become efficient and they are able to deploy these solutions from one place and manage from one place. Now comes the runtime aspect of it. Now comes the user experience aspect of it, which is which is our business users who are actually going to use the application. They should not be feeling that they are right now working in FNO and to work on sales or CE or field service. They have to switch to different applications, which is completely different look and feel. Right, so the the motivation, the expectation and the desire is to ensure that our users are getting a consistent experience from a from a UI perspective and also from a runtime perspective, meaning uh, all the capabilities that are required for a user to be able to complete their job being in one application needs to come together uh, between the runtime capabilities of the platform and also the, the user experience layer of the platform. So that is where one user comes into play, and that is the motivation and, and the expectation for how One Dynamics One platform is going to help our users. And last but not the least, as we all know, business processes consume a ton of data and business processes also generate and produce a ton of data. And no ERP or no business application is complete without a consistent reporting and analytics experience. Because at the end of the day, getting the PNL is is the bread and butter for the organization, and everything else is a means to an end, right? So one insights is 
is the vision where one dynamics one platform is attempting to bring this data estate that an organization will have to also be able to have a consistent reporting and analytics experience and we will learn more about this in the detailed sections so from a one dynamics one platform perspective this is the essence which is bringing the platforms together so that our application users, our application developers, our application administrators, and also insights can benefit from a consistent user experience. And that is the motivation for One Dynamics One Platform. So next slide, please. Now, after understanding from a persona perspective, Let's spend a few minutes trying to understand from a technology stack perspective. This slide is attempting to express the complexity of One Dynamics One platform because the convergence needs to happen throughout the technology stack um, of finance and operation and also Dataverse and Power Platform. These layers need to come together at every slice of the technology stack. So convergence is not going to be restricted to one specific area of the technology stack, but we should be expecting the entire stack to be coming together because only then we can enable experiences across the, the UI layer, the runtime layer, the admin layer, the developer layer, you know, everything that we have talked about. So this is just a technical representation of, uh, of how uh, we should expect convergence to happen and what are the kind of changes we should expect as part of you know, One Dynamics One platform? Sort of next slide, please. Now, as, we, as the journey has started three years ago and there is still a few more years um, you know, for this journey to continue, it is important for us to establish a key set of principles um, because it is very easy to get lost in the details, but I but the most important part is for us to understand some of the core principles around which One Dynamics One platform is going to be executed. And these core principles are common for all of us. These principles applies to Microsoft and these principles applies to our rest of our ecosystem, ISV customers and partners, everyone together. Principle number one is be opportunistic, don't rewrite. So this is basically stressing on the fact that platform convergence is not happening for the sake of convergence. Platform convergence is a very methodical, thoughtful approach where we are being opportunistic and we are engaging with all of you and getting help and insights from all of you in terms of understanding what makes sense to converge and what does not make sense to converge. The expectation is absolutely not for anyone to rewrite what is already existing. Existing investments, existing applications are and should and must continue to work as the platform is converging, as the platform is modernizing. So that is um, that is very core uh, and that is principle number one. Principle number two is a acknowledgement that we have already talked about, which is One Dynamics One platform is going to be a journey. It has already been a journey for three years, but it will still be journey for another three to five years, right? So it is a crawl, walk, run approach, uh, partly because we, we all want to be opportunistic, which means it takes time to understand a specific scenario to make sense and to take a decision if it makes sense for us to go and converge or enable convergence capabilities for that scenario. And also a reflection and acknowledgement of the scope of the work that is there, because bringing two technology stacks and converging them is not going to happen in in a release. It is a multiple year journey, and this principle is basically reflecting that uh, so that we are uh, we understand and we have the right expectations. Principle number three here is stating the fact that. Yes, we should not be rewriting any of the existing applications, which was principle number one. However, we should be understanding what is getting added to the platform. Where is the platform going and how is the platform converging 
so that any net new investments that we are making, we as in Microsoft and we as in all of you together, we should be cognizant to understand what is available from a convergence perspective, and we should be using those tools and those technologies to build new capabilities so that the application stays on the path of you know, innovation. So that is what principle number three is about. And last but not the least, X++ has been a rich developer tool set for several years, and X++ will continue to be that going forward. The way we should think about platform convergence and one is one platform is it is giving us opportunities for a developer community with more options that will be helpful in building cross platform applications in addition to X++. So which means our developers will have more choices to pick and choose from based on what scenarios are being customized for and what tool set is going to be useful and effective and they can choose and use that for their implementation. So it is, it is an acknowledgement that X++ will continue to be a tool of choice in the developer toolkit. So these are the core principles around which we as Microsoft are executing, and we are sharing this with all of you, and we've been sharing this for the last couple of years, and I'm sure some of you must have already seen this, but we are in this together and we should be aligning consistently on these core principles. So with that, I will hand off to Lane for taking us through one admin uh, set of capabilities. Lane. Sounds great. Thanks, Sunil. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm a program manager on our admin experiences team here at Microsoft, both for the Power Platform as well as Lifecycle Services. Um, we've heard uh, the feedback from admins pretty loud and clear. You know, the job uh, is becoming more complex, more time consuming, um, even more error prone, especially for admins that are using both workloads, you know, the FNO ERP workload in LCS, as well as the CE and Power Platform workloads in the Power Platform Admin Center. And so, uh, sorry, if you could switch to the next slide, please. Uh, as we as we start this multi-year journey of admin unification and making the the job and the life of the administrator better and simpler, um, we have uh, some con some concepts that we need to start thinking about and, and some change around how we think about FNO. We've always thought about FNO as an environment, right? When you go to LCS, you don't install FNO into an environment, right? You deploy a sandbox or you deploy a production environment and the environment is also the application. Uh, but that's not really how things work in Power Platform Admin Center. An environment is actually uh, a one to many type concept. It's more of a collection or a container. And so you can have an environment and install field service, which is great. And then you can later install sales. And there's no question on if it's going to work with the same data set, share the same master data and transactions, and then you can build experiences on top of that. And so that's really where we want to get FNO plugged into in terms of that, that richer ecosystem, uh, more flexibility. Um, but it also means we need to start uh, harmonizing some of our lifecycle operations as well. Things like uh, environment copy and backup and restore. Uh, in the admin center, that always copies code and optionally data. And for FNO and LCS, we've always had this process called database refresh, which copies database, but never the code, right? And that's why we have a DB sync process to kind of uh, change the database to match the code in the target. These are just some nuances that we have, even at a very particular level uh, that makes the job of the admin much harder. So we want to have a unified admin experience. We want to have one place for the admin to go, being Power Platform Admin Center, and one rich Power Platform API to, to power it all. Uh, but before we get there, uh, we need to share a few things that we have available today, uh, right now, this very minute in uh, Lifecycle Services called Power Platform Integration. And that's actually how you start this journey with us. And so uh, we have a demo video for that. If you could switch to the next slide and kick off the demo, that would be great. In this demo, we will review capabilities for administrators in both the Lifecycle Services portal as well as the Power Platform Admin Center. First, let's start here in LCS where I have a new sandbox that was just deployed. You'll notice that there's a section called Power Platform Integration, which is a new feature used to make integration with the platform and Dataverse as simple as a few button clicks. You'll see that I have a new initial Power Platform environment created, 
which is true now for all sandbox and production environments. So let's go visit the admin center and see if we can find this environment. And sure enough, here it is, the same sandbox. It has the same name as the environment from LCS, but you can see that Dataverse is not yet deployed. This is that initial Power Platform environment that comes with every sandbox and production instance. I can see that it is linked to FNO and I can access that from here. I also cannot inadvertently delete this environment because the life cycle of this Power Platform environment is tied directly to the sandbox from LCS. And so let's say I want to go ahead and set up Power Platform integration, which is a feature that allows us to quickly set up integrations to the platform for low code uh, development. But let's say I already have a CRM instance that I have been using for quite some time, and I'd rather use this one than the one that came with my FNO instance. And so we can go back to LCS, hit the setup button, and instead of deploying a new Dataverse instance, I can actually opt to use an existing one. And so it's completely up to the admin on what route they want to choose. But either way, once uh, the connection to Dataverse is established, features like virtual tables, business events, and dual write will automatically be configured and connected with no more manual steps needed by the admin. And so we'll go ahead and hit setup. <clears throat> now this cannot be undone. It's very similar to applying a platform update. Once you apply that update, it cannot be unapplied. Uh, it also means that all of the admin and environment level decision making is done here within LCS admin portal, where the admin typically does their work and is no longer managed inside of the FNO application itself. And so now that this is underway, let's go ahead and take a look at the admin center and see what new options we have available there as well. So we'll first start at deploying a new project operations trial. I'm going to go ahead and give this a name. And I'm going to change the environment type here to subscription based trial. This will always come with Dataverse. And so if I click next, I can choose some settings that are specific to Dataverse. And then from there, I can choose to enable Dynamics 365 apps. From here, I can choose a environment template, which is just a list of pre-installed applications. I'm going to choose project operations for non-stocked and go ahead and deploy. Now this still takes an hour, so we're not going to wait for that. I've already spun one up called Project Ops FNO. This environment, as you can see, is also linked with Power Platform integration to Dataverse, and it has an FNO and a CRM runtime. If I go ahead and open this environment here, I can go to the data management workspace and go to dual write and see that indeed dual write is set up and pre-connected. I do not have to manually set any of these features up because again, this was deployed as one instance. We know the CRM, we know the ERP, everything comes pre-connected for you. And so this is uh, the future of how we will deploy sandbox and production environments from Power Platform Admin Center. This concludes the demo and thank you for listening in. So as you've seen, uh, Power Platform integration is a great way to get started on this journey with us. It allows you to connect uh, your ERP instance to a Power Platform environment. Eventually that will be our migration path. And for those of you who want to see how environment management will look like um, in the admin center, you can start with our project operations trials and we will have more ERP trials coming uh, in, in future months. Uh, but with that, that concludes the admin section. So I'm going to hand it over to Jason to talk about uh, some user experience. Thank you. All right, thanks, Lane. Uh, I'm Jason Green. I'm a program manager on the uh, Power Apps team. Um, so I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about what uh, one user experience means for this ODOP effort. And so for that, if you want to go to the next slide, uh, we're going to be focusing really on three different uh, user experiences. So we have different user experiences from the FNO apps, model drone apps, and campus apps. And so with the one user experience, there's really two aims that we're going after. So the first is being able to mix and match these assets. So one of the principles that Sunil talked about at the beginning was that we didn't want to rewrite was not necessary. So regardless of where your existing interface assets exist in any of these three, uh, we want to allow you to continue to use that user interface regardless of where you're building your app uh, from here on out. And so there's already an effort um, 
for model and canvas apps if you're aware of this uh, called custom pages to kind of bring those two technologies together um, so i encourage you to look at the documentation or the blogs for that if you're interested uh, what i'm going to spend time on today in a few minutes is talking about what's currently possible with mixing and matching fno in with these other two the second aim uh, is around a consistent user experience so if you look at the screens here uh, you can see that they are wildly different. Uh, there's different controls, there's different visual styles, uh, there's different components. And so one of the things that we're going to be looking at is how do we bring these together so that we have a unified, cohesive experience regardless of which app style you're using. And so I don't have anything to show for this today. Um, I just want to point this out as a goal and uh, something that we're going to be working on. And I'll just encourage you to keep your eye on future release plans for more details on this consistent user experience piece. So if we go on to the next slide, uh, so we'll just cover what is currently available in terms of mixing and matching. Uh, so Canvas apps can already be embedded inside of FNO apps. So this is an option that you can use to enrich your FNO experience. Um, you can do this through personalization, either as a new tab page or as a brand new form from the dashboard. Uh, you can do this as a developer through the Power Apps host control. Um, we pass context into this to give so you can uh, initialize your power app correctly. Uh, there was also there was actually a tech talk on this uh, previously for extending uh, FNO with Power Platform, so I encourage you to look at that. Um, it has a bunch of details on example use cases, um, more details on how you actually accomplish this in the application, and um, also some recommendations on how to style your, your Canvas app so that it looks and feels uh, more native to FNO. So that's one option that's already available today. Uh, for the second one, if we go to the next slide. Uh, you can also already uh, embed model driven apps into FNO. So this, this came with the full page apps uh, feature that became mandatory with uh, 1029 release. So that's the October 2022 release. Uh, so you could basically add these in the same places you could Canvas apps. So you would configure this with the URL for the model driven app, um, stick it in the tab page as you see in one of the pictures. Uh, the, the video that's going on is a um, is a full page app from the dashboard. Uh, you can set the URL so that you suppress the top and left nav. Um, all those details are covered in the, uh, the corresponding model driven apps in FNO Tech Talk that's referenced at the bottom as well. So I encourage you to check that out as well if you want more details here. And then if we go to the last slide, the other, the most recent thing that you can do is now you can start to embed FNO pages inside of model driven apps directly. Um, so some security work was done to to enable this. It only works um, for the linked dataverse environment. So the one that's linked for virtual entities or dual write, um, which will be talked about in a little bit. Um, but if you do that, then yes, you can actually embed FNO directly into a model driven app. So the example we have here is a, a customer service scenario, a call center rep that before they would have had to go open a brand new tab uh, with FNO to go to the customer service form to uh, service this request. And what the team did was they actually embedded this through an iframe uh, web resource directly into the model driven app so that all the experience is all in one in one place. Uh, FNO has added a URL parameter um, embedded equals true so you can suppress the top and left nav uh, to make this look and feel more native as well. And so we'll be continuing to enrich these uh, these capabilities over time. Uh, but that's just a quick sneak at what you can do today with one user experience. So I will hand it off to Rama for one user runtime. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Hi, I'm Rama Krishnamurti. I'm a program manager in the runtime team. Uh, one user runtime is about handling business data during runtime and creating end-to-end -end business process orchestration between front office and back office applications using four ODOP capabilities, namely dual right, virtual table, business events, and data events. If you go to the next slide, you will see a bunch of templates are available via dual right for managing your master data, transactional data, and end-to-end -end business processes for your FNO business scenarios, and we will be going through this list in a bit. Now, citizen developers in your organization are empowered to extend the FNO scenarios on the low-code platform via virtual tables, business events, 
power automate flows, power pages, and power apps. Usually, the business analysts and the domain experts of your organization play the role of a, a citizen developer. And we will get to it into a demo that showcases this experience. Now, pro developers are also empowered to build custom experiences for both existing and as well as new FNO scenarios via Dataverse extensibility using plugins, virtual tables, and business events. That said, you can connect the FNO data with Dataverse in two ways. If you go to the next slide, you can use dual write or virtual table or both to connect your FNO data with Dataverse. Now, dual write is a capability that enables tightly coupled real-time interaction between Dataverse and FNO, where data can flow bidirectionally. When a create, update, or delete action on a record takes place in Dataverse, an equivalent create, update, or delete action is triggered on FNO within the same transaction scope and vice versa. Now, dual write infrastructure is extensible to tune the data even to flow one way as well. Now, with virtual tables, the FNO tables doesn't physically reside inside a Dataverse, but they are exposed virtually and any create, update, or delete action on record directly reflects on the FNO tables in real time. Now that we know how to connect the data, let's see how to connect the FNO business logic with Dataverse. You have two mechanisms available. The first one is data events. So data events are events that can be triggered to to do during a create update or a delete operation on native tables. For virtual tables, these events occur on an on created, on updated, on on and on deleted operations. Now, on the other hand, we have business events uh, which are which are used to trigger uh, any events when there is a state change happening or when a criteria is met while executing a business logic. So say for example, uh, when you when you are a, when there is a business operation happening like invoice is posted or payment is approved or a collection letter is sent, you may want an event to be triggered. And if the integrating systems are subscribing to this event, now they can trigger additional business logic based on these state changes. Now, if you see dual write, virtual table, business events, and data events, these are all complementing functions and they can work together. Now you can use the combination of these capabilities to accomplish your, your cross application business scenarios. Now, if you go to the next slide, now let's go one level up and look at the business concepts. Now you will see some of the basic concepts like customers, products, contacts, etc., exist in both FNO apps as well as in Dataverse based CE applications, right? So when you use both front office applications as well as back office applications of D365 in your business ecosystem, these business concepts must be connected to create a data and process harmony to your end-to-end -end cross application scenarios. So say, for example, if you're handling an SMB sales motion using Dynamics 365 sales application, you will be onboarding customers to your sales channel with a pre-context about the customer. Like where, like you may be knowing that, hey, whether the customer is a foreign national or not, what is his or her uh, place of origin? What is that spending limit, right? So based on those information, you determine certain things like, hey, what should be the credit limit? Hey, what should be the pricing and discounts that should be applied? So based on these various judgmental parameters, like appeasements, vocal agreements that you have with the customer, you you, tweet, you tune the data, right? Uh, and these are all tuned uh, manually, right? And if you are using an e-commerce portal based on a Dynamics 365 commerce application where customers browse to your website and self-register themselves, you would expect advanced engines to kick in because there is no human intervention and you want expect the the system to determine the credit limit product pricing discounts etc right based on a bunch of trade agreements and and uh, discounts and engines that's available uh, but when you are using both sales application as well as commerce applications together in your business ecosystem 
Now you would need the, the customer concept and the data model to be harmonized in a way that the data coming from the SMB sales motion and the data coming from the commerce e-commerce portal can reside in harmony within the D365 system and can talk to each other seamlessly. Now this is the hard part and we have done that hard part for you. If you go to the next slide, so based on the common usage patterns, uh, we have harmonized a list of concepts between CE applications and FNO applications, and this is the list available for you today. Now, these are available to you when you are using dual rate capability. Now, if you look at uh, Dataverse, Dataverse has a business units uh, concept that controls the security aspects of the business data. Whereas FNO has a legal entity concept that controls both the security as well as the legal aspects of the business data. We have harmonized these two concepts by introducing the legal entity concept in Dataverse without breaking the business unit concept. Now, integrated customer master enables customers data to originate either in the front office application or in the back office application and allows it to flow bidirectionally. Similarly, integrated uh, vendors as well as uh, contacts are also available to you. Now, if you want to organize your business data uh, available on the front office applications in a, in a more organized way similar to FNO, we have enabled the organization hierarchy and exposed that in Dataverse one way. Uh, we have expanded the, 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 the contact, uh, the, the customer data uh, and embellished that with uh, loyalty and reward points uh, from FNO from the completion standpoint. Now uh, you have products, product hierarchies, dimensions, sites, warehouse, etc. And they are integrated between the sales and supply chain applications to create a unified product master experience for you when you are using the uh, D365 as a whole in your business ecosystem. Now we have also exposed finance and tax data in Dataverse one way so that it can serve above and beyond just being a reference data for your business processes. Integrated code to cash flow allows orchestration of quotations and orders along with the state and substate transitions between the sales and the supply chain applications. And once invoiced, uh, the invoice becomes available in the sales application as a read only copy. Similarly, uh, integrated procure to play flows uh, allows orchestration of the purchase order and the product receipts between the field service application and the uh, supply chain application. So uh, to, to, to complement the the uh, end-to-end the -end, uh, code to cash and procurement to pay flows, we have uh, also enabled the, the supply chain and the commerce price engines as an on-demand functions to surface the best possible price based on the trade agreements and the discounts framework that's available in uh, FNO. Likewise, on-hand inventory and available to promise dates are also available uh, as an on-demand uh, function that will help the front office application users to make uh, intelligent decisions during the sales and uh, service motions. Assets are integrated between the field service and the supply chain uh, so that the field agents can serve the in-house assets uh, using the field service mobile application. HR fundamentals like worker, job, position, etc. are exposed in Dataverse and are enabled to flow bidirectionally. Party and global address book models of FNO are exposed in Dataverse so that the, the CE applications are, can allow a person or an organization to play more than one role in the business and it has the ability to change the context between, uh, uh, between the, the, uh, the, the transactions based on the role. Now, notes integration helps to pass simple text information between the front office and back office applications for any type of record like a customer, contact, sale, purchase, etc. Now, if you see, we are bringing the best out of both CE applications as well as FNO applications uh, when we have harmonized these concepts. And these are the things that are available to you today. And these templates will help you to start your cross application usage journey. That said, now let's take a look at some examples of the citizen developer experiences enabled with virtual tables and business events. One Dynamics One platform enables citizen developer experiences in the Power Platform with finance and operations data and events. Let's look at two quick examples to demonstrate. 
In this first example, we'll use finance and operations virtual tables to help create a reseller portal in Power Pages. In this Power Pages site, uh, I've used just a standard template to build the basics of this site. Uh, I've added a title and added a section here that's going to contain some of the data that I want to display. Looking at the data, this is where we get access to finance and operations data through virtual tables. If we look at other tables, this contains the full list of tables from my Dataverse environment. If I filter this down to MSERP, this shows me all of the virtual tables It's an operations environment exposed because I have enabled the Power Platform integration. They are then here available for me to use in this native experience to build with the Power Platform tools. So let's look, for example, at the sellable released products. This is what I want to use for this site. In this reseller portal, I want to display a price list so all of my resellers can come to this site and see the prices that I have for my products. Um, on this table data experience, we can create views for how we want this data to display. So set my filters, set my columns, and make sure that everything displays how I want it to be displayed on my site. Once I have the view set up how I need it, I can come to the page and add that view as a component to my portal. So I'll add the list, select the view that was created. And in a few clicks, I now have that table added to my Power Pages portal. Also in another section, I've added to this Power Virtual Agent that is going to display some information similarly using that those finance and operations virtual tables to go back into my finance and operations environment, get the data that's needed and return it in a Power Virtual Agent bot experience so that I can communicate with that in a it, with natural language processing available through the Power Virtual Agents product. So let's see what that looks like. Once my page loads, I see that the view is set up and displaying the price list from my finance and operations environment on this site. For the products bot that I've created using Power Virtual Agents, I can start a conversation uh, by typing in what I'm looking for. I'm looking for products and the, the virtual agent understands the, what I'm looking for and asks uh, what specifically I'm looking for in the, either prices or location. We'll say pricing, it's asking for which item. We'll type what we're looking for and it's going back using those virtual tables to get that information and return it to me in my Power Platform experience. So we could continue the conversation on, but this is a quick demonstration to show how we can use those virtual tables, making them available for a citizen developer in without a single line of code being written to make that available for us to create these products using the data from our finance and operations database. The second example to look at is in Power Automate and how we use events from finance and operations to automate our business processes. In Power Automate, we can trigger a flow based on events that are occurring in finance and operations with two types of events, either business events, which are the business logic based events like purchase invoice posted or a collection letter sent. And the second is data events, the create, update and delete operations that can happen against a table. And we'll look at that for this example. So in this scenario, we, we want to say every time a new worker record is created, we want to send a welcome email to that new worker that's the, that's been added in our organization. So we use the Power Automate connector and say for the added operation, we'll select the worker table, select a scope, and then we have access to the rich ecosystem of connectors in Power Automate to automate whatever process we want to have automated based on that triggered event. So we just want to send a quick email. We see Outlook has a connector and we'll send an email. And then we can use the dynamic content from the data event. We'll send it to the primary email of the new worker.
type out whatever content we want in that email based on the, the dynamic properties of that event and have that sent off and automated. Uh, but having access to Power Automate and the ecosystem of connectors enables us to have some fairly complex automations based on data and events happening in finance and operations. So one dynamics, one platform, using the Power Platform integration, synchronizing these events and using vir virtual tables enables powerful citizen developer experiences in the Power Platform. With that, now handing off to Janago for one pro developer experience. Thank you. Thank you, Rama. Hello, everyone. I'm Janugo Rabellino, and I'm a program manager on the X++ and FNO development tools. I am excited about all the goodness that we showed you today, and I'd like to show you how you can leverage it today, and even more, how you can do even better in a little bit. So if we move to the first slide, uh, let's talk about the situation today. If you are a Power Platform developer, the good news is that you can already use everything that we showed today with no changes. The beautiful part about dual bright virtual entities and business events is that they take FNO uh, concepts and they expose them in the Power Platform as native Power Platform elements. That means that you can use virtual tables just like you would use any other entity in Dataverse. So there was a question in the Q&A about being able to use that events. Yes, you can do that. There were questions uh, about uh, what we will do all right. Well, again, it's just normal and regular database con uh, Dataverse concepts. That means that the tools that we have today already can give you a lot. So looking first of all at the existing one, that Visual Studio. We have a Visual Studio Power Platform Tools extension that allows you to create debug and deploy plugins, workflows, uh, integration, endpoints, webhooks, uh, and a lot of those things. And if you know about an extension, you know that there is a Power Platform Explorer built in, and you will see that you can browse that Power Platform Explorer and create plugins based on a FNO entity exposed either as a dual right or as a virtual entity. You can call business events, you can create business events in FNO and have them surface in the catalog in Dataverse, and you can operate in a transparent manner just using the tools that are available today. On top of that, we are building new features in existing tools. So today, for example, we have the Power Platform CLI, which is an exciting tool that allows you not just to do administration tasks, but also development tasks, such as packaging and creating template projects, et cetera, et cetera. Well, a little known feature of that tool is that it allows you today to create what we call unified packagings. That is to create a solution of solutions, a solution file that contains both Dataverse solutions and FNO modules. Moreover, you can take this single artifact that contains several pieces and deploy it as a single unit straight from the Power Platform CLI. That means that today you can create complex solutions that have Dataverse plugins and FNO business events and forms and modules, et cetera, et cetera. And that become your project that is packaged as a single artifact and is deployable right away. So by the way, Power Platform CLI is also integrated with Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. So I would encourage you to try it out uh, again, using the environments that Lane already showed you that are possible today and see how it goes for you. We would love to hear your feedback. Moving on to the next slide, we are now giving you a bit of a sneak peek into how we are thinking uh, to make out of work for FNO developer for X++ developer. So let's start to from where we are today real quick. Today we have two main issues. One is a general issue related to FNO development where you know that you need to have 
pretty much everything in the kitchen sink on a single machine, either a virtual machine or a cloud hosted environment. That virtual machine contains uh, everything. It contains uh, the FNL runtime, it contains Visual Studio, it contains SQL Server, SQL Reporting Server, the AOS, et cetera, et cetera. It's running on Windows Server, it needs to be run as administrator if it's a VHD, uses a different runtime, but also it's relatively hard to connect to Dataverse. It's not immediate to do that operation. You need to probably do some networking configuration, some authentication, et cetera, et cetera. And that's far from ideal. So going forward, uh, we already announced that we are going to deliver in the next few months a new type of environment that is described in the next slide. And in this new environment, uh, so if we can move to the next slide, what we are going to have is a local environment that is a pure development environment. It only contains your development tools, Visual Studio, the Visual Studio extension for Power Tools and FNO. It contains a shadow copy of the AOS uh, to, to work as a SDK of sorts, but then everything happens against cloud instances. And the cloud instances are tier two instances, and they are pre-connected and pre-configured to work with Dataverse. So that will allow you to be productive right away. And you will have those uh, unified environment that are ready for you to develop against. Moreover, those uh, development environments will not necessarily need, they could still use a VHD or a CHE, but they won't need it. You will be able to run them on your local machine. So straight Visual Studio, regular cloud-based development as we all know it. So I hope this is as exciting to you as it is to me. Uh, this is what I had for you, and we should move now to the more exciting stuff on one insight. So Melinda, can you take it away? Thank you. Hi, I'm Melinda. I'm a product manager in the One Insights area. Um, one Insights is really about gleaning insights from your data, and We've learned a lot from the existing features in Dynamics. We've learned a lot from customers. What we want to do is make it really, really easy to for you to apply advanced AI, tell stories with analytics, and we want to make it really easy so that your makers, your citizen developers can do this. Um, it all starts with data. So the first focus is, of course, to make it really, really easy to work with data. And what we want to do there is combine the features that are in finance and operations and Synapse Link for Dataverse so that you can work with data really, really easily in Synapse and Power BI. So you should be able to launch Synapse using Dataverse, the features that you are familiar with today, but you can also now select FNO data using the same experience. Now, we also want to make it much more performant so you can easily work with the data in the lake using these tools. Uh, we have a sneak demo to show you. So let's go to the next slide and let's roll the video. You can find Azure Synapse link function in Power Make Portal under Dataverse section. After clicking new link, you can connect your Azure resource in the first step. All available resources will be listed in drop down menu. It is optional, but highly recommended to connect to your Spark pool to convert your data to a Delta Lake format. Then you can search for FNO data in the next step and click save to create the link. After initial setup complete, you will see the sync status and data detail at the same page. By clicking go to Azure Data Lake, you can check your raw data stored in the storage container. By clicking go to Azure Synapse Analytics, you can access to the workspace where you can consume your data directly. Here we show the example you can check your data Create schema, create views under the same database. We also support Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, and you can find views we just created. You can also check the raw data and attribute in the external table folders. So, so what you saw in the demo is Synapse Link for Dataverse being able to choose finance and operations entities. 
not only that, what you also saw is how easy it is to work with Synapse, just like you know you work with SQL. In fact, you can even work with SQL Management Studio. Let's move to the next slide. So what you saw is a sneak preview. It gets better. It gets much better. In fact, what you saw is being able to choose finance and operations entities in Synapse Link. We also want to support other data types from FNO in the future so that you can pretty much have one experience to select data from all dynamics. Now you saw how easy it is to integrate with Synapse Analytics. You don't have to use another tool. You can use SQL Spark right then and there. We've also done a lot of work to make it much more performant. So as you can see in this table, if you choose Parquet or Delta and Delta Lake as the format, your query response get much, much faster. In addition, Parquet format compresses the data in the lake. So your data sizes in the lake get smaller. What that means is you pay less, both in terms of storage costs as well as the cost of query because query needs to now work with less data. We're also excited to announce some features. For an example, we will start supporting firewall restricted storage accounts. Um, this is just a little bit, a sneak peek of what we're doing. Um, stay tuned, we're doing a lot more in the future. Uh, with that, I'll hand you over to Saurabh. All right, thank you. Thank you, Melinda. Thank you everyone for a great presentation today. We are coming towards the end, so we want to close with few key takeaways, few references and upcoming tech talks. So let's talk about few takeaways. Ordop is a vision. It's not a new product, not a new SKU here. It's the same experience for end users. They will continue to use the same application, but with better performance and more new features and simplify their day to day work. X++, dual write, virtual table, nothing is going away. It's all is staying and gonna work more in harmony with each of the apps. Microsoft is completely committed to improve the experience and productivity for the administrators, end users, developers, and analytics, analysts out of the box. These are just some of the upcoming tech talks. One admin LCS Power Platform integration is already scheduled. It's next week on December 7th and 8th. And licensing one Synapse Link experience for all Dynamics data, one developer experience, which Genego hit on, uh, unified as well as the cloud development experience for FNO. We'll cover in that. There are many improvements coming in dual right area related to performance uh, in the initial sync, in the async, all those modes. So we will have a deep dive tech talks on those areas. One batch uh, converging the uh, batch story from Dataverse as well as an FNO and the low code development deep dive for FNO where we will have like power apps, power pages development uh, from FNO. This is the second last slide references. So we'll have this slide available to you uh, in a couple of in few days. And yeah, you can use these links, existing tech talks, uh, workshops, and pages, one docs pages, which you can which can help you to get up to speed on these odd technologies. So yep, we are coming towards the end. This is our final slide, Q and A. And really thank you for your time. And we look forward for you to use these sort of technologies. As Sunil mentioned in very beginning, be opportunistic. Think very before you do any customization or extension. See what, what can be the other ways I can achieve this towards the future of one dynamics one platform. JJ Harsh, do we have any question? I know it's one minute uh, left on time. So if you have any question, we can take live here. I think we have pretty much uh, answering all the questions, so um, we can continue. But if there are any open questions, you know, uh, someone wants to ask on the mic, so we can do that. Yeah, we please keep uh, sending your questions through Q&A, and we will answer them uh, in the next five minutes more. So yeah. Thank you all. Brad, over to you. 
All right, thank you, Saurabh. Uh, to all of our attendees out there, I have posted a link to a short survey in the Q&A panel. We would love to get your feedback on today's session and hear what you'd like to see in future events. Thank you in advance for your participation. As a reminder, the recording of today's session will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within the coming weeks. And finally, I'd like to end today's session by extending a big thank you to our presenters and audience for joining us today. Have a great day ahead, everyone.